here we go. Today we are playing Korumon. Has my webcam frozen? It looks like it has in the weirdest way. <laughs> Can't have it. <laughs> frozen with the most awkward smile I've ever seen. Um, so yeah, background for this game. Uh, I don't really know anything about it, but I had seen a video like talking about Pokemon spin-off games and I saw the art of this one and I thought it looked quite nice. I like pixel art. So I thought I'd uh, roll with it. One of the few things I saw as well when reading the description was that uh, you can, it has like rule, in-game rules for like uh, Nuzlocks and stuff like that and randomizers, which, you know, that's pre-built into the game, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, this reminds me of a game I used to play. There was a game I used to play called Mocky Town and it had a character design that looked very similar to this. You had little blocky people. Mocky Town was like a little Habbo Hotel style game, not gonna lie, bit of a banger game. Oh, they've got like a Team Aqua reference. Isn't that Team Aqua or Team... I swear that's Team Aqua. Uh, and we will be... Uh, modest. Keep it simple. Okay, cool. So we got the lime green... A lot of lime green splashes of green in here. Not really a big fan of the color green. If I'm honest, I'm gonna put it on blast. Uh, it's never really talked to me, you know. I feel like there must be like something to do with research in like people's brains that like certain colors call to people more than others. Because for me, blue calls to me. I'm just a blue, you know. I love like blue shades of blue. Uh, I think it's all cool. Green, not so much. Oh, bedroom. Let's go hang out in mum's bedroom. Let's go rifle through her wardrobe, because that's not weird at all. Oh, there's a run button too. Space bar. Okay. Very good. I broke your flappy, swirmy high score last night. Ha <laughs> ha. Beaten by your little bro. He plays Flappy. Uh, flappy Bird. My favorite video game. Bro, I want to play Flappy Bird. I'll fucking whoop my brother. The fuck does he think he is? Doesn't even let me play. That's pretty toxic. Finally going to become a Lux Solus Battle Researcher. To celebrate your new job, I made a reservation at your favorite breakfast place. We can head there before going to the station. And one thing can I say about, like, American culture versus British culture? In British culture, it's really common for, like, people to eat, like, at uh, home with, like, home-cooked meals. But in American culture, it's way more common to have, like, restaurants and diners and stuff everywhere. I would vastly prefer to live in the American style of way. I want to go, like, it's definitely cheaper cooking your own meals and learning to cook. It's obviously an invaluable skill. If you could juggle both, that'd be great. But sometimes uh, I wish that British just did more, you know, like, to me, the closest thing to me is like a cafe and it's like a 20 minute walk. I don't want to do that, you know, fuck that shit. But would I want to go out for like meals all the time? Yeah. Would I want to go to a diner for lunch? Hell yeah. That sounds pretty cool. And that's cool. I like the way that it looks like modern so far. It looks, uh, you know, definitely like a bit set out, a bit uh, more striking to look at than the average uh, Pokemon game. Like starting in a train station, a bit like Persona 5. Very cool. We offer trainers the ability to customize their equipment. Most trainers pick the normal difficulty, but like the high difficulty could be the chance. So it looks like it has difficulty mode in a Pokemon game, which is interesting. You'll have a wonderful time. Please give me a moment while I check your registration. I mean, the good thing about like a fan-made Pokemon game is that they can go a bit more like crazy uh, with... Oh, see, this is this is tough. R the regular experience. Take this handbook and read it well. Explains the differences of each defect. Oh, okay. Let's, let's read the handbook and see what the differences are, how crazy they are. Trainers looking for a challenge may consider using a difficulty other than the normal, but what exactly does that entail? This book will explain all the rules for the difficulties. It's recommended that you choose the normal. So easy, the difficulty is normal to take it easy, come on more fully. So we're not going to do easy, that sounds pussy talk. Normal, regular experience, no extra rules. Hard, who want a challenge? If one of your Karamon fates, it will leave your squad, heeding the call of the wild. It returns to its habit. Can't escape from any battle. See, that's not too bad. Insane. Welcome to insane. If your Pokemon dies, your, your animal will die in real life, your pet, your dog. That'd be pretty sick. The most challenging difficulty, in addition to rules of the hard, these rules also apply. You can't use any recall items, forcing you to travel through Coromon habitats. You may only catch one Coromon in each area using the Lux Law. If it faints, you are out of luck. Using the Lux Law, if it faints, you're out of luck. No, you are free to capture any perfect Coromon. So that's kind of more like a Nuzlocke. Uh, insane. 
I I'm feeling hard right now. I don't think hard is that brutal. I mean, losing a Pokemon would suck. But, you know, if I play through Pokemon games normally, sometimes I get like a little bit like restless. So, I think we'll play hard. Uh, just, just for, uh, just for a, oh, custom difficulty. Oh, you can choose stuff as well. That's really cool. So this is what I was saying about, like, I think you could choose, that like, you can choose randomized traits, randomized evolutions, randomized skills, randomized quest Coromon, randomized starter Coromon, trainer Coromon, wild encounters. So really, really cool, um, that they decided to go this route, I think. And I, I, I think, like, Sword and Shield... When you think about it, like, or, or new Pokemon games in general, why the fuck can't you do this shit? Like, especially in a new game plus, right? Like, I feel like some games, right, and Pokemon is one of the worst for this, is like an institution. And, like, people let Nintendo get away with, like, not doing options like this because it's like, ah, oh, they're too, you know, they're so big. They probably couldn't, like, have a, you know, their finger on the pulse um, with stuff like this and have it be so, like... But it's like, I don't know, I don't think it's an excuse. I think there's not that many options in Pokemon in general. They must be aware that they could do stuff like Nuzlocke. And stuff like Nuzlocke get like millions and millions of views on YouTube. So like, it would be cool if they had stuff like this. Like, it's it's already so much more. When you start Sword and Shield and you see how limited the options are on the menu. Uh, oh, here we go. Like, Pokemon game, I've got to sit through like six cutscenes. I've got to play through the difficulty when the beginning is like full of fucking tutorialization and bullcrap. Whereas this, you see this and you're like, dang, i got so many options. I can do whatever the hell I want. I think it's a nice little uh, change of pace. To be honest. Uh, but, nonetheless, uh, I don't want to do one of those. I want to do the preset difficulty of hard, as it's my first time. We won't go crazy with custom. Because I don't even know what Pokemon are. Okay, I did it wrong somehow. Right, hard. Confirm. I think I pressed enter and that went back. Thank you. Every battle researcher requires a gauntlet in order to carry Karamon. I don't know why that word is so hard for my brain, dude. I see it and I'm like, carry Karamon. Carry ka carry Karamon. Tongue twister. We have several color variations from which you can choose. One moment, please. Oh, yeah. We have the Gether Blue variant. The Patabit Green variant. And last but not least, the Infinix Red Please choose the one you like the most. Uh, it's going to be blue. For sure. I like a bit of blue. It doesn't look like you can see it that much anyway, so I'm not too bothered about it. But All about the blue. That one goes well with your eyes. Well, I do have blue eyes. Thank you. Don't mind if I do, you notice. Sexy receptionist Pokemon lady. Okay. This looks like an Animal Crossing village from first impressions. It looks like the uh, GameCube one. Do you remember where they had like the, tra the train was up here? Reminds me of that a lot, you know. I have not seen the starters. I am not familiar with the starters. Ah, you must be the new battle researcher I've heard so much about. Gideon is the one that'll get you up to speed. Let me fetch him for you. Oh, Gideon! There's an analyze right here in this very lab. As an incentive for sending us oodles of interesting data, you will be rewarded handsomely, of course. That does sound a little bit like uh, Pokemon uh, Arceus with the research tasks, but we'll see. Milestones of promotion bonus can be redeemed right in your menu. Isn't that handy? It's pretty simple stuff. I'm sure you'll figure that out as you get more comfortable with the job. So I think types and stuff will be very different in this game. Yeah, let's have a look. We are electric, two times damage against water, zero, half damage from electric and water. Half damage against electric and whatever type that is. Let's see, sand. Two times damage to electric, but half damage from... Is that like demon? Foul. Foul does two times damage to water. Half damage to sand. Ice. Ice. Uh, oh, ice seems pretty good in this game, actually. Takes not much damage from many of the types. We've got magic, does two times damage. So magic is basically like psychic in, uh, psychic seems like, uh, it seems like, uh, pretty good at avoiding stats, which is good. Uh, heavy, interesting, does half damage to fire, air, does two times damage to fire, and cut. Okay, we're going to have to learn these because I'm going to forget them already. Normal does uh, half damage to sand, two times damage. It doesn't do... See, it's not super effective against anything. Is that toxic over there, the green one? Poison, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm interested in ma magic. Magic seems like a cool type. I will now ask you a series of questions while the machine measures your brain activity. Here we go. 
You encounter a wild Karabon. What is your first reaction? Try to capture it. Uh, actually, no, I'd attack it and then capture it, right? The thing is, I might answer somewhere in the middle, dude. I mean, I'd obviously want to capture it. That's, like, first priority. But I would never, like, just try and capture it outright. I would attack it right away, right? But, like, I think they're thinking that I would be attacking it. If I answer attack it, they're thinking that I would, like, try and kill it. But that's not what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to say try and capture it and assume that, you know... Shit's going on. Uh, what is your motivation for becoming a battle researcher? I want to tame the strongest Coromon. I want to earn a good living. Earn a good living? Resident sleeper, dude. Some good motivation right there. Which of these three attacks appeals the most? Inner peace. Fiery breath. Tough enough. It's got to be fiery breath. I'm seeing fiery breath and I'm clicking that. I'm looking at the stats. I'm thinking, is that like flamethrower? Which of these colors appeals the most to you? Crimson red, navy blue, arctic blue. Ooh, two types of blue. They've done a number on me there. Man, I can't even think what Arctic Blue looks like off the top of my head. Is that just, like, lighter blue? I feel like I go in Arctic Blue. Same colour as my living room. Final question. Describe your first uh, date. Mine would be candlelit dinner because skydiving, you know, that's a lot of effort. I don't even think I'm that scared of heights, but just, like, the idea of having, like, a harness attached to me, having to jump off something... You know, I probably would be scared of heights in the moment, but I don't think I'm that bad at heights, like, generally. But I think in the moment, I'd probably be pretty scared. But I think I'd do it. I just, it wouldn't be my idea of a fun day. Like, if a girl wanted to do that, it would be an instant red flag, because I'd think, oh, this girl wants to, like, do stuff in life. And I just want to sit, like, and play games. Or, like, sit on a sofa. Or, like, you know. I want the first signs of a girl to be, like, sedentary. And a museum tour would be even worse. Like... Me and Liana went on one museum tour and it was the worst day of my life. It was it was just hell on earth. I just couldn't believe how long it was. And I thought like I'm an adult now. Maybe I'll like maybe I'll enjoy museums more. You know, maybe I'm like at that phase in my life where I can appreciate museums. I think I appreciate them less. Um but that is the life of an ADHD person. You know, if you're ADHD and you're in a museum, you know what it's like to just be like, oh my god, can we go to the next fucking area? I'm so bored. I can only look at a fucking pot for two seconds. And there's just too many pretentious people in a museum. Okay, here we go. Toruga, the fire Coromon. Very strong, loves to battle and can learn powerful moves. I like him already. Oh, we've got Nibblegar, a water type. It doesn't really look like a water type to me. High endurance in battles and is able to outlast most other Coromon. So we've got defensive attack for fire. Ooh, Cub Zero. Coromon is jack of all trades. The perfect balance between offense and de defense. And now the results of your analysis. Oh, so they're going to... One clear winner. Ah, shit. They're going to give me fire, dude. And I actually want Cub Boy. If they give me War Boy, I'm going to be pissed. But I don't think they will because I haven't been defensive. Oh, let's go. They knew me. Okay, good shit. Trust your instincts and pick the one. Nah, you chose it for me. I agree. I was looking at Cub Zero and I thought he's cute as shit. Can I like see a up close like picture of him? Look at him, dude. He's a little fat little cub. He's got scratch and cute pose. So sharp that lowering its attack is impossible. Spinner. I don't know what spinner is all about. I I I 100% want uh, Cub Zero right now. Jack of all trades, Cub Zero will be ready for any situation. Yes, we will. Give a nickname to Cub Zero. Uh, I, I wonder if there's a name changer. Because if people if people want the stuff to be named after them later, then I might. Although, to be fair, this is first playthrough. So, it's probably good to like actually learn what their names are. The algorithm never lies. Your Cub Zero seems to have the sharp claws trait. Very useful indeed. But you won't get far out there with just one Coromon. Take this pat a bit for extra protection. We might be a bit training heavy in this game because it's Nuzlocke rule. So if my Pokemon die, they die for good. I'm assuming if they die here, maybe they don't die. If you hold down on your skills, you get a detailed overview of their effects. Be sure to try it out if you're ever confused with what our skill does. Good luck, mate. Major, give it your all. Ready? Let's jam. It's fucking jam, dude. Sending out Tortuga. Oh, they're like Beyblades they spin out. Uh, Tortuga does look really cute. And my guy looks a little bit chubby from behind. But that's okay. We got Scratch versus Slam. I hope Slam and... Okay, Slam does about the same. So we're in an even fight. Critical hit. Pog. I don't think they can do critical hits, right? 
Or, no, no, it said scratch can't do less damage or something. I don't, I don't remember what it said. Easy dub for the boys, Cub Zero. Critical hit. Get demolished. I'm sorry, Tortuga, you're very cute. Tortuga might be actually one of the cutest stars I've seen. It's super cute. Am I ready to catch some Coromon on my own now? Absolutely, you can start by exploring Radiant Park. I'm on it. Wait, there's one more thing. I advise you not pass the bridge yet. The Coromon past that point are generally less beginner friendly. Larry from the R&D lab can hook you up with a gauntlet module to keep you safe. You can find the lab in Radiant Park. Best of luck, Modest. I'll be at the Coromon lab if you need me. Shine bright. That's their like, catchphrase, shine bright. I'm pretty sure why. Alright, let's get out of here. Let's make like a shepherd and get the flock out of here. Is this a Pokemon Center? It sure looks like it. Might be a Mart, actually. What do you sell, kid? So spinners, I think, are Pokeballs. I don't know if they sell them here, though. That's kind of cringe. No, they do. Plain spinner designed to efficiently catch normal type, which costs a lot more. Uh, well, we'll buy a couple, I say. Uh, we've, I think we've got enough HP cakes to like be starting off with. I'm so proud that the fast travel network I've worked on is being used by Battle Resource. Nowadays, every trainer hub has the high-tech marble right outside their doors. I mean, there's no need to stag, stand by your creation all day bragging about it, is there? Like, you know, just let it speak for itself, innit? Being used by a whole city infrastructure, I don't think you needed to, you know, sit there like a bloody, you know, door-to-door -door salesman or something. Okay, I think I've nailed it. Radiant Park, that's what I wanted. Okay, I think we've got some trainer areas. Can we look at our Pokemon by any chance? I haven't looked at Patapit yet. Patapit is a standard type. No, normal type. Uh, what's he got? If the opponent has high attack, the Coromon overclocks its own attack to match it. Damn. That seems pretty fucking good. So he could have the attack of like a legendary. Essentially, if he went matched against the legendary. But then the legendary is going to have legendary attack anyway. And probably other better stats. So it's probably not as useful as you might think. But it's still useful. Still not. It means that you wouldn't go down without a fight, right? I assume. Perhaps you can help me. Could you catch one for me? That would help me so much. Come back when you call. What, do I have to bloody... Right, let's see who we can catch here. We got Armado. Looks pretty cool, actually. I like him a fair bit. I don't think he'd be like, you know, in my dream squad or anything. But I think I could get... Wait, he's only level one. This might kill him. Oh, let's go. Okay, that's an easy catch, then. Critical hit. Kind of cringe. Kind of yikes. Kind of yikes. Uh, let's try a spinner on Armado. I do like the little catching animation being like a windmill and like... I think it's pretty cool. We got him. Easy catch. Uh, would you like to check him out? Why not? I don't see why not. Armado. The boy. The legend. He's got Scratch. Radiant Park. I mean, we could give this little freak away to the... Uh... uh to the person. So you matched a, car and a catch Coromon? I did. I got Cretin. Wow, Armado, my supervisor will be so impressed. Cretin left your squad. Jerome, what are you doing? You were supposed to catch one for yourself. Give that Coromon back, Coromon back at once. Oh, we got. Oh, maybe we got Coromon back. We got Cretin back, dude. I called him Cretin because I didn't want Cretin. 